Hi there, thank you very much for coming to watch this video. Uh, today's video is going to be about when you go into a big race, like a marathon, and you want to take your kit bag, and you want to know what to put in your kit bag. So um, this is going to be a list of things that you're definitely going to need some of them. Some of them will be optional, depending on what's right for you. Um, so don't think you have to cram every single thing I say into your marathon kit bag. Just pick and choose the ones that you think are going to work for you. So I'm going to start off with the first one, which is going to be your race number. Do not forget to take your race number because without your race number, they won't let you run. If you don't wear that, you can't prove you've entered the race. So that's a must. Don't forget to take safety pins. If you can't pin your number on, you can't wear it. So you need to have your safety pins in your kit bag at all times. If it's a chip timed race, do not forget to take the chip that they provide to you. Put it on your shoes and away you go. Some places will have um, a little tag that you tie onto your own bag. Others will have some sort of official kit bag. This is a pretty big one, but this is a, an official kit bag for the Bupal under 10,000. So, again, it, they won't take your kit bag onto the baggage lorry if you haven't got that official bag. So make sure you've either got your official bag or you've got your label that goes onto your rucksack. Make sure you take the leaflet or magazine that they provide you with all the fine instructions so that you don't get lost on the day, you know where the baggage is, you know where the toilets are, you know where the start is, all that kind of stuff, and it will really relax you into your race to, to know what you're doing. Make sure you read this before you go as well. Don't forget to take a watch. I'm pretty old school. I just have a little stopwatch on my wrist. I don't have a Garmin or anything like that. But if you do have a Garmin, you know, make sure you've packed it, make sure it's charged, and make sure you switch it on a little bit before the race so that it has time to find those precious satellites because you don't want to be on that start line and the gun goes bang and you're, all you're getting on your watch is finding satellites. It's no good. You've got to have a strategy in place to deal with nipple chafing. It's a, something that has to be spoken about, you know, but you've got to lubricate yourself. You've got to lubricate those nipples, people. Keep them lubricated. Keep them safe. Or if you're not really into lubing, there's always the option of plasters. So make sure you find out in training before the race which one of these options is going to best protect your nipples. And uh, yeah, you make that decision, but make sure you've got one packed if it's a problem you suffer with. You've got to have something in your bag to eat before the race if you're going to be, you know, waiting a long time from breakfast, traveling down there, all of that, standing in the starting pens. You know, it's often it's, it's a necessity to take on some extra nutrition. So just have something in your bag, you know, whether it's a banana, um, you might prefer to drink energy drinks before a race. You might want to do a gel at the start of the race. So make sure you've got those things. Don't pack this too near to the lubrication, though. It raises a few eyebrows. Just be careful when you're packing this bag. And if you've had your nutrition, you know, what goes in must come out. It's a sad fact of life, but we've got to talk about taking your pre-race poo. Now, everyone needs to do it. And if you don't do it, you can find yourself having a really uncomfortable race or stopping on the route, having to use a port loo And yeah, it just knackers your time completely. So you're going to need to try and go before the race. Now, these big, big marathons where they... They tell you there's hundreds of toilets, and yeah, there is, but there's thousands of runners, so the toilet paper can run out. You've got to prepare for that. So take yourself a toilet roll in your bag. Now, I recommend that you have a half-used toilet roll like this, you know. Unless you've got a serious problem, I don't think you're going to be needing a big full toilet roll, and uh, that takes up a lot more room in your bag. So yeah, a little half-used toilet roll. Now, as well, you might find that you don't quite get that pre-race poo in. Your, your digestion system's just not working on clock today. It's not doing what you want it to do. Um, and you haven't been. So I always take some of these with me because I, I, these are the tablets. But when I'm racing, I take those instant ones that just dissolve on your tongue, you know, um, because you don't want to be going in the middle of the race. So if, if worse comes to worse and you haven't been, get yourself some Imodium and that will sort you out. I do have a little story about pre-marathon poos, which um, it's a bit minging. I don't know. Should, should we go there? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell you. Right. I was at a London Marathon 2013 and port queues were huge. And there's about 15 minutes to go until the start and people are piling into the pens and 
this woman, she's obviously not considered this properly. She's not, she's not prepared. And she's not got there early, not had her poo. So she's got to go. She's got to do it. So in the middle of Green Park, just in front of everyone, she just squats down, pinches one off, wipes herself, just gets the tissue, just pops it on top of her little deposit and walks away and just leaves it there. And uh, it wasn't very nice. And once you've seen something like that, you just can't unsee it. You can't unsee it. And I just had this image in my head for the next 26.2 miles of this absolute princess of a lady. Pack your phone so that you've got that with you. Make sure it's fully charged before you go, obviously. Um, most phones nowadays have got apps, you know, running apps on them. So if you don't use a Garmin and you run with an app, then your phone's essential. Uh, you might carry it on you in case of an emergency. You know, if you're doing a marathon, it's going to take you a long time and you get into a spot of bother, you get injured. You might need to ring for help. Um, you might need to ring for a lift home, whatever it might be. Camera, lots of pictures. If you want to take pictures on your route, you know, it's, it's a really essential bit of kit. So make sure you've got your phone. Don't forget it. These next items are pretty weather dependent um, on what time of year you're racing and you know what the weather's doing. So um, if it's a really hot day and you, you're a sweaty person, then uh, you need to manage that sweat. So you might need some sort of sweat bands, headband, wristband, whatever you fancy really, whatever works for you. Um, on the other hand, it might be freezing cold, so you're going to need some decent heavy duty running gloves there. Um, or it might just be mild you know mild cold but it's enough to bother your hands a bit so you get yourself the lighter version of gloves um the other thing uh is a hat so you know you might need to keep your head warm just a little running hat skull cap there um so depending on the weather the point really is you need a pack clothing that's appropriate if you've been to a race before and you've got one of these space blanket things and you perhaps didn't use it because it was a warm day but you know you've still got it brilliant take that you can wear that on the start line to keep you warm and just dispose of it because it's obviously cost you nothing it's a really disposable item another option i've seen people do is use a bin bag um, basically just get a standard black bin liner make a hole in the base of it in the middle where your head will go through and then down the sides of the bin bag, you need two little holes for your arms, poke them out, and then you've got yourself a waterproof covering, which you can just rip off. So I always pack a bin bag. And also on the subject of waterproofing, I mentioned before about the phone. If you're carrying your phone and it's raining, you might need to waterproof the phone. Uh, just a standard food bag or sandwich bag, whatever you want to call it with the sealable top is the, is the main thing just to make sure that you can seal that water out and keeps your phone completely dry um, and you just wrap that around your phone sorted and actually if it's a touchscreen phone I mean I, I have an iPhone as you saw I can still use the touchscreen through this through this uh, plastic bag so really good thing to just have in your bag you might want one of these pace bands depending on the race that you're going to um, like so I got this one from the London Marathon and you go to the London Marathon Expo before the race to collect your number and they give these out so if they if you do have one of these available at your marathon take it brilliant um, so it tells you up here there's a 3 hour 15 pacing band and if I just come in closer for you uh, there you go so if you want to get 3 hours 15 you've got to run 726 miles and these are the splits so as you're hitting the mile markers you can see the splits you need to be doing um, and it's a really good little guide it's just quite it just goes around your wrist um, just goes around your wrist and you can obviously just check off those mile splits as you go and see if you're on target for your target pace if you are doing a long race um, you're going to need to consider what you're going to do for hydration and nutrition on the go during the race more more so for marathons and ultra running really um, so obviously gels um, you've got to carry these if you're going to take them with you you've got to carry them um, I don't have a gel belt or anything to show you but I've seen all kinds of contraptions you know, belts that go around your waist armbands to hold gels there's, there's all kinds of things out there if you need that make sure you pack it um, what what I've got here is a like a belt that goes around your waist and you've got these four little water bottles um, you can put in there energy drink or water, whatever you fancy putting in there. You know, if you think your marathon is going to go badly, you might want to take a bit of vodka. Who knows? Um, I mean, most races now do have water stations. They do have gel stations and things. But 
a lot of the time, like, you know, on a marathon, you might get one or two gels on the course. And if you're one of these people that follows all the guidance and you must have one every 20 minutes or whatever it says, you know, you want to carry 15 gels with you, great. But just have something in your bag to carry that with you. What I've done in the past to carry gels and indeed, you know, my phone and other stuff is get a pair of shorts where there's a zip uh, pocket on the back here. So you can just keep a few bits and pieces in there. Um, and it's not kind of weighing down at your sides, it's, it's sat at the base of your spine and you don't really notice the weight of it to be honest. So you can get shorts or if it's cold, you know, leggings with pockets on the back. So that's another option to carry your gels and stuff. And then there's just a few other things really um, that you might want to take. I was working on my list here. So um, obviously you want to take your house keys, you don't want to get locked out. And you want some cash as well as a bank card because in, in the case of an emergency, strapped for anywhere that's going to take card you just don't know so just have some cash with you um sunglasses you know if it's a bright day you're going to want that because otherwise you're going to be sort of straining all the way through the race and it's just another thing to be dealing with so make sure you've got sunglasses um maybe some deodorant for after the race because if you're going home on public transport and you're marathon fresh you're not going to make many friends trust me um also just maybe a second pair of trainers to train into you know once uh, sorry change into uh once you've been running in a pair of trainers for ages and you've got blisters and whatever else you know you just take them off fresh pair of socks fresh pair of trainers brilliant does you the world of good um and just a change of clothes as well because you're all sweaty and you just want to get rid of what you've been wearing in the race so have a change of clothes in your bag uh, if you're asthmatic don't forget your inhalers because you might need them um, and then something for the finish line to eat now a lot of races will give you something in a goodie bag. Um, pistachio nuts is a favourite. They love pistachio nuts. Um, I can't eat pistachio nuts. I'm, I'm intolerant to them for some reason. So I have to take something. So, you know, just think about that. If you've got food intolerances or special dietary requirements, just take something so you've got something to eat because you'll need it. You will be a hungry bear at the end of that race. Okay, um, what else? Um, yeah, I said about a bin bag to wear earlier. Sometimes if it's wet, take another bin bag just to lay down to sit on and then you can actually take your weight off your legs prior to your race without getting a wet bum. And last but not least, um, you are going to want, even if you've got one of these official plastic kit bags for the race, still take a rucksack of some kind. Um, what, what happens is with these official kit bags, they're usually a drawstring tie at the top and um, you know they can come undone and stuff. So if you've got, like, I don't know, your wallet or something in your bag, and then it gets bounced around in the kit bus and the bus drives somewhere else and then they go to offload them quick because the runners are coming and they chuck them out and stuff can get just fall out at the tops of these bags. So actually having a rucksack, put everything in the rucksack, zipped it up and sealed and then you just drop that rucksack into that kit bag and tie it. You are not going to lose anything. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it just gives you some ideas about what you need to take to your marathon and you know, I hope that it really sets you up so that you're ready and prepared and you have a good run. If you like the video and you want to see more of my videos um, about running, then you can subscribe by clicking the button which is below somewhere. And uh, please leave me your comments. I'd really like to hear from you whether you like this video, what you thought was good about it, what you didn't like about it. How could I improve my videos? I'm always looking for feedback. Um, and I'll always reply to your comments and, you know, just try and get a bit of a community and a chat going on. Um, and yeah, just share my videos if, if you know other runners that might benefit from them. Um, so yeah, have, have a good run, have a good marathon, and I'll see you at the finish line.